Are you thinking about buying a new construction home or maybe you have recently bought one? Well, I'm here to give you a punch list of sorts, uh, but information that you need to know if you're planning on building a new home in the Phoenix or surrounding areas. So stay tuned for this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Kelly Norton. I'm the AZ Realty Lady, a Valley native and a real estate agent of over 22 years right here in Phoenix. So I help people that look to relocate to or within Phoenix area and uh, love to educate you. So I'm gonna give you this information. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kelly Norton, your AZ Realty Lady at EXP Realty. Count on me for all things Arizona real estate. All right, so thinking of buying a new home and building a home out here in the Phoenix area, this is gonna really be helpful for you kind of as a checklist of things to plan for and be aware of. So I want to tell you right out of the gates here that in Arizona, your realtor does need to be with you on the first visit to any model homes or any houses. And I know some people say, oh no, you can go in. Of course you can go in, but your real estate agent would not be paid and would not be able to uh, represent you unless you paid them. So in Arizona, the builder or the seller, uh, if your agent walks in uh, with you, they will co-broke. So that means they will pay the commission for you. So uh, just make sure that you have your agent with you on your first visit to the model homes. All right, so let's dive right into the fun stuff here. Okay, so number one thing that you want to be aware of is when you are closing on your home, your landscaping and maybe some other things in the house aren't going to have the same warranty that the home itself and the construction does. So let's talk about the landscaping. Most builders are only going to give you 30 days either from close or install. And what that means is that if the plant is dead, you only have that time frame to notify the builder and get it replaced. Now, some builders, when I'm at the final walkthrough and they say 30 day warranty, I always specify, is that from closing or install? Because some builders in Arizona, it's from the install date. But by the time we're closing, now we're past that date. So then we wanna get something else in writing that we still have another window. So again, these are, these are little things that me as an agent are gonna help you with if you choose me to represent you on your new new build, your new construction, and have you go in there on your first visit to the model homes. So, uh, but as a consumer, you won't know to ask that question. So these are just some of those little things, right? Now, some of them do in 90 days, but I have seen 30, and that's why I'm pointing that out to you. So number two, let's talk about um, warranties on things that are manufactured inside of the home, cabinets countertops. A lot of times builders will have that warranty expire the day that you close and move in. And that's because most of the times if those get damaged, uh, most of the time if they're damaged, it happens at move in with your movers, with you sliding boxes or sliding things across the counters, bumping into the cabinets. So they don't want to warranty those really far out because more than likely it happened after you moved in. Some builders will give you a little longer grace period, five days, 10 days. So just make sure that you're aware of what that is. And there's things that I do when I do the walkthrough with you that we kind of check to make sure that there isn't already something existing to kind of alleviate that responsibility on you uh, after close. And usually if we find things before closing, it's a lot easier to get them handled by the builder um, because they want to close the house. So they're a lot more motivated to really get the punch list done before you close. All right, so number three, settlement statement is something you're going to get when you close on your home. And this is a breakdown of all the costs and everything, and it will, it will show that you've purchased the property. So when you close on your new home, a lot of times you need to go down to the post office with that document in order to get your mailbox keys. So just know that that first few days after you close on your new build, that you're going to have some things you're going to need to do. Probably going to need to meet the cable people out there, the phone service. You're going to need to go down to the post office and get the, get the mailbox keys set up. Now, I'm not going in any particular order here. Um, so we're do talking about some things that are going to be before closing, some things after closing. Um, but another thing that you want to remember after closing is register your appliances, your appliances, your AC, 
And I know it gets busy after you close on your house, but you have to remember to do this because if you register your air conditioner, a lot of times that's gonna bump your air conditioner from a much smaller warranty up to even 10 years. It depends on the manufacturer, but it will give you an extended warranty. So very, very important. Same with your appliances. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. It is not over, but if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel and click the little bell, that way you're notified when I put up new videos. And again, your agent needs to be with you on your first visit to any model homes. And if you like the information I'm providing, I have a whole another set of uh, information that I provide on my Instagram channel. So go and follow me there. All right, let's continue. When the home is being built, there's a lot of opportunity for dirt, debris, dust. You know, there's no walls on the house for a while. And then when you have the AC ducts put in, and you're in a work zone, they get very dusty and very dirty. And you, you probably wanna get those AC ducts cleaned out after you close on the property. Again, you can't do anything to the house until after you close. So you wanna make sure that you have someone come out and clean those AC ducts. Now going back to those countertops and to the tile floors with the grout, remember there, there could be a slight seal coat on your, your quartz, your granite countertops, but if you want to really make sure that these are gonna last for you, you're probably gonna to want to get those sealed, um, especially the countertops, granite. And I don't have quartz at my house. I think you can still uh, seal quartz, but definitely check with the manufacturer. Um, but I use 511 impregnator that I purchased at Home Depot. It's really easy to put on granite countertops and it seals them so, so good. Uh, so definitely remember that they might not be sealed really, really well. And I know the day that I was moving in, I dumped a bunch of stuff on the countertop that was uh, wing sauce and it started to stain my countertop and I was panicking. I was able to get it out and crazy, but Dawn dish soap, <laughs> Dawn works for everything. Um, so Dawn dish soap actually ended up pulling the stain out for me. It was the only thing I had nearby. And I thought, well, even, even the color of the soap isn't gonna be as bad as the, as the wing sauce. So here we go. So I poured it on there and it actually pulled it up. It was, I, I was amazed. So way to go Dawn dish soap. <laughs> but remember, seal those countertops. Also, when you have tile floors, your grout is definitely not sealed. So you might wanna consider sealing the grout as well. And I do have recommendations for companies that do that. So you can always reach out to me for that. All right, so another thing that you definitely want to know is that when you're doing your inspections, some builders will scope the plumbing lines just to make sure there was no debris that got stuck in there, but other builders are not going to go that added expense and have a plumber do that. So you wanna find that out, and I always recommend that you scope the plumbing lines. Again, guys, there's like a hundred things that I that I could give you. These are just my top nine or the nine I wanna share with you today that are very, very important, but that's the importance of having your own representation and having a realtor that knows new construction, that's been doing this for 22 years <laughs> and can really guide you and walk you through this process. So scope the plumbing lines and you might be saying, oh, I didn't know I needed to have a new build home inspector. Yes, I recommend that you do because when I am selling a home on the resale market, I would say if someone's selling their home for the first time, so they bought it new and they're selling it for the first time, nine times out of 10, those repairs that we find, they were left over from the builder. So now that's you, the homeowner's expense and responsibility. But if you had it checked before you closed, guess who's paying for it? It's not you. <laughs> That's the builder. So very important to um, get, get a home inspection. And your home inspector, uh, the ones that, that I'll connect you with, will offer a, a plumbing scope for you. So let's talk about the keys. So some builders have like a master key and then they have another one they'll put in and it'll drop the pins and then you have your own private key. What you want to do is just make sure if you have any concern about who might have a key to the property, I always recommend when you close on a home, whether it's new or resale, get the locks changed. That way you know 100% that when that key is being handed to you, it's never been with anyone else. So even though some of the builders will rekey it and that is just for you, 
you didn't follow the key from it being made to be putting in your hand. So if you want to be absolutely for sure that no one has access to your home or a key to it, then just get your locks changed. And again, I can re recommend to companies for you that can do that as well. Okay, so once you close on your home, most builders are going to give you a one year cosmetic, come back in, touch up cracks, drywall, little things that they'll come back and do touch ups for, adjust the cabinets. If they're, you know, just depends. You have to check with the builder what they include. But most builders are going to give you that opportunity close to the one year mark. So a lot of builders will say, wait to, do, wait to do your home inspection until you get close to that one year mark. I always recommend you do that home inspection before closing because they're very motivated to get the home closed and you have all of the people working on your house at that point. They're already in the community. They're already right there. It's going to be done like that. Now the punch list, um, if you've done your home inspection ahead of time, then all of your critical items are taken care of. Now all we're worrying about is, say, settling cracks. Sometimes you get some cracking on the outside, inside of your home. Totally normal, especially when you've built a home. And we have drywall on the insides. And a lot of times you're going to have little hairline cracks that start to show up. You might have, um, you may have a little crack that shows up in the grout in your tile. These are the things that is a punch list. So you might want to get... And this is my final tip for you today. You might want to have a little notebook. If you're my client, I give you a little notebook when we first start looking at homes, but you might fill it up with all of your excitement with neighborhoods and notes that you're having on HOA dues and everything else. So uh, you might want another notebook or use a Google note in your phone. And just every time you come across something, oh, this needs adjusted or, oh, I want to put that on the punch list for the one year. It's very good to just make those notes. That way you don't forget when it comes to the one year, you don't go, oh shoot, I knew there was something and I don't remember what it was. This will take care of that issue for you. Guys, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Again, I'm Kelly Norton, the AZ Realty Lady, and I hope to help you with your relocation to or within the Phoenix and surrounding areas. You can call me or text me. It is the best way to reach me. And pretty soon here, we should be getting a relocation guide um, up on my YouTube channel. So. Once you see that, feel free to download that and I'm here to help. So call or text anytime and uh, look forward to meeting you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.